Hi, uh, I'm John Guerin. I'm the Chief Business Officer of Unicure, and I'm a member of the Board of Directors of ARM. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity to present Unicure uh, to you. Uh, Unicure is a global leader in gene therapy, AAV gene therapy, <clears throat> and I will begin with just a, the usual forward-looking statement as we are a publicly traded company um, and with a, with a safe harbor. Um, and so this uh, presentation will contain various forward-looking statements. Um, key highlights for Unicure in the near future are our Hemophilia B program, with which we have recently announced a global licensing transaction with CSL Bearing. We will also have top line data reporting in our phase three HOPE B pivotal study in late 2020 and a BLA submission anticipated for 2021. <clears throat> we also have a clinical stage Huntington's disease program where the first patient procedures have been initiated in a phase one, two study in June. And we expect early safety data presented in these initial patients in, in 2020. <clears throat> We also have a uh, spinocerebellar ataxia type three program, or SCA3, where we've initiated IND enabling studies in 2020 and plan to submit an IND in 2021. Uh, we also continue to increase our manufacturing capabilities and scale and conducting, we're currently conducting process validation for atranidase for our submission. <clears throat> so beginning with our um, manufacturing global leadership, Unicure has established a large-scale manufacturing facility in Lexington, which we recently expanded to 80,000 square feet, which uh, produces AAV gene therapy products uh, using an insect cell baculovirus platform. We do so at a 500 liter stir tank scale, uh, and it's scalable up to two by 2,000 liters, so rather significant uh, scale in hand and we have strong intellectual property position with respect to the, to the AAV insect cell baculoviral manufacturing uh, technology. It's important, I think, to point out some of the potential benefits of, of the platform of insect cell and baculovirus manufacturing. We have um, significant control and flexibility of the process. It's a consistent process from small to large scale, so that makes it very high, highly scalable. It is very cost effective and it has the uh, capacity for high volume um, and high quality product. So it's an excellent platform for commercial utility. We also leverage uh, the uh, serotype of AAV called AAV5, which we believe is a best in class vector. Uh, we have a lot of experience um, with it in the clinical setting and it has demonstrated a tremendous um, degree of safety as well as uh, low levels of uh, pre-existing neutralizing antibodies typically found, a very favorable immunological profile for both systemic delivery as well as delivery to the brain, and no confirmed uh, T-cell mediated immune responses, so no loss of effect uh, observed to date. Now I'll begin with the hemophilia B program, we'll call etranicogene desaparvivect, or etranides, um, and otherwise known as AMT-061. And, and uh, to begin with the discussion of uh, the hemophilia B transaction with CSL bearing. This is one of the largest gene therapy deals announced to date. Um, CSL bearing is an ideal strategic partner with extensive commercial experience in the hemophilia space. And we believe we'll get uh, Tranides to the greatest number of patients as quickly as possible. It also strategically positions Unicure to focus aggressively on its pipeline, uh, and, and which was uh, the next uh, candidate is our AMT-130 in Huntington's disease, which I will talk more about. It will also give us uh, roughly $720 million in pro forma cash once the deal closes, um, and that deal is under, currently under um, review of the uh, financial regulators in the US, UK, and Australia. The, um, the transaction details a little bit. This, this is a roughly $2 billion, more than $2 billion deal in total economics with $450 million up front and 1.6 in regulatory and commercial milestones. Uh, we have a double digit royalty payments that go up to uh, low 20s 
and start in the mid-teens, um, and uh, full reimbursement of clinical and regulatory costs. This partnership enables Unicure to really um, take a, a, an important pivot in the organization um, and leverage the world-class global uh, hemophilia commercial infrastructure that CSL has. Um, this is uh, uh, something that CSL has developed over a long period of time um, and has demonstrated certainly high, high degree of capability. They are well established um, with a highly competitive um, uh, set of products. They've worked a long time in bleeding disorders. They have deep and long-standing relationships within the hemophilia community, which is essential in order for it to have commercial success. Uh, and they have a very broad portfolio of a variety of different products um, and over $1 billion in total hemophilia sales in 2019 with commercial sales in over 100 countries. So very well deployed to be able to, to maximize the opportunity for our product. Hemophilia is a significant disease. There's over 6,000 patients in the United States and 14,000 patients across Europe. And uh, the critical burden is, is significant. It's a lifelong bleeding risk despite current standard of, of care. A significant patient burden with cumbersome treatment and adherence and quality of life issues with current therapies. Um, it's a significant economic burden of the cost of current therapies. Um, and, uh, and the social burden as well. So it is an area with uh, important unmet needs. We see etranacogene etranidez, desaparbivec or etranidez as, as a product with some very key important distinguishing features. Um, we have already demonstrated the ability to increase factor IX activities to, to what we see as therapeutic levels. Um, there is no bleeding events post-treatment. Um, no replacement therapy for bleeds outside of surgery, no requirements for immunosuppression, and no exclusions of patients with pre-existing neutralizing antibodies. Um, and, and a lot of these are things that we have seen in our phase 2B trial, and we will have data in our phase 3 trial later this year. Um, it is also very well tolerated and no inhibitor development. So in our view, a very strong profile for a gene therapy product. Uh, uh, AMT061, or Etranidez, um, does have a predecessor product which only differs by a single amino acid in the structure and otherwise is entirely the same in terms of the gene therapy product. Same uh, capsid, same promoter, same transgene with two nucleotides difference resulting in a single nucleotide, single amino acid change in the protein. And it, uh, our phase one, one, two trial was conducted with AMT060. Um, and the, this is, uh, demonstrates the data from two cohorts, a lower dose cohort and a higher dose cohort. And one of the things that's extremely important to recognize is that there's long-term data follow-up here and very consistent without loss of effect um, uh, factor nine activity throughout the uh, duration of this uh, long-term trial. In the phase 2B study with, um, with the Tranidez, uh, which was conducted with three patients, um, we have demonstrated rather high and fairly long-term and certainly consistent um, uh, factor IX activity. So we see 41% of normal on average between the three patients, which is a certainly a very strong result. Um, the HOPE-B phase three pivotal study is, is underway. Um, and as I mentioned, we anticipate having uh, results later this year to, to, to disclose. Um, it's 54, 54 patients um, and severe and moderately severe hemophilia patients, typical uh, open label, single dose, multi-center, multinational trial. And, and uh, it is using AAV, uh, five in our product, and that so there's we uh, do not exclude any patients based on neutralizing antibody status um, uh, for AAV5, um, and uh, patients serve as their own control with a six month lead in. And we measure various different uh, parameters, including factor nine activity, um, ABR or the frequency of bleeds, uh, the decreased use of factor nine replacement therapy, and general uh, efficacy and safety parameters. Uh, and as I mentioned, that there will be data released on that trial a bit later this year. I'll move on to the Huntington's disease program. This is the next program in our clinical pipeline. 
Um, briefly, Huntington's disease is a rare but fairly prevalent disease in the United States and Europe, as well as a number of other countries. Um, and it is an autosomal dominant neurodegenerative disorder, which is a result of the expansion of the CAG trinucleotide um, in exon one of the Huntington protein. Um, and currently there are no uh, therapies available, certainly no disease modifying therapies available for these patients. Um, AMT-130 itself is a, a, a product to um, have a disease modifying effect on these patients. It's a one-time administered uh, gene therapy, AAV gene therapy, uh, that uses our silencing platform that we have termed MyCure, uh, which is a microRNA um, uh, knockdown of the Huntington um, of the Huntington gene expression or the, the messenger RNA from that gene, uh, targeting exon one of that gene where the mutation occurs. This would also affect exon one fragments that also occur in this disease and have, have a toxic effect. We've demonstrated strong knockdown um, in the striatum in the cortex in our preclinical work, uh, as well as um, functional improvements, again, preclinically. Um, and and uh, we're not expecting any toxicity um, and we certainly uh, believe that we have the potential to be the first gene therapy um, to treat this disorder in the market. The preclinical validation that we have is pretty extensive. Um, we've done work in rodents and non-human primates and pigs, as well as uh, cultured human neurons that demonstrate both safety, efficacy, and widespread distribution, which is extremely important you know, to the key areas of the brain that, that where the drug needs to be effective. Um, this is something that, that not all therapies are able to demonstrate. Um, so this gives a picture of the brain and how the disease progresses through the brain. Um, it really starts in the striatum and we administer directly to the striatum. So we have a very significant effect within the striatum, but there's also spread of the disease uh, into the cortex. And, and our drug also has a similar spread um, and therefore addresses the key areas of the brain that are where the disease needs to be, uh, where the uh, therapy needs to be effective. Um, this demonstrates that spread to the key areas, although it is, in, it is administered directly uh, into, the, into the striatum, where you see many of the red dots. Um, the knockdown is, is uh, seen throughout the key areas of the brain, including the cortex, where the knockdown needs to occur. And this is in non-human primates. Um, we also have uh, done testing in, in mini pigs, which is a very good model. Uh, in fact, the larger brain, closer to the size of human brains than with the non-human primates. Um, and we, again, see significant mutant Huntington knockdown in key areas of the brain where, where that knockdown needs to be. Um, that is sustained over a 12-month period of time. Um, we have also seen an improvement in certain key functional parameters within uh, the mouse model, um, and, and that is um, demonstrated here. Um, so, the, and this, this is a, a further uh, indication of um, the uh, exon one um, knockdown in both the striatum and the cortex, uh, which is a, a critical um, um, improvement in the disease because exon one fragments rather than the entire Huntington protein also get produced. And unless you target exon one in your therapy, you will not address the exon one fragments that, that occur. And we do, and we've demonstrated that here. So we have initiated a phase one, two clinical trial. Um, this is to assess safety, tolerability, as well as efficacy parameters. And it is a, a multi-center randomized double-blinded study. Uh, it's controlled with imitation surgery uh, with two dose cohorts and a total 26 patients. Uh, these are early manifest patients, and uh, we have 18 months of follow-up um, and then extended for five years for those patients who are, are treated. Um, this particular slide shows the study design, and it is a, um, as I mentioned, two cohorts. It's initially, the first cohort, which has been the dosing, has already begun. Um, with some pauses in between dosing in order to assess safety, and then we'll move to a higher dose cohort two um, at, at a later stage. We will be looking at a number of efficacy endpoints, biomarkers, as well as imaging, but we also look at clinical parameters and 
specific motor symptoms uh, as well, um, at which we think we'll be able to see some effect in these early stages of the disease. Um, next, I'll talk a little bit about our research pipeline, our preclinical pipeline. This slide shows the current pipeline for the company. Um, and I've already talked about the hemophilia B program in our liver-directed diseases area and the Huntington's disease program in our CNS area. But in addition to that, we have a Fabry program um, as well as a SCA-3 program in CNS and a collaboration with Bristol-Myers Squibb that involves four additional targets. Um, in the near term, some of the catalysts that the, the company uh, will anticipate, I've already mentioned, uh, but in hemophilia, um, we've announced the deal with CSL and uh, we're anticipating having that deal will um, be, be closed. Uh, and when it is, we'll announce that of course as well. Um, and then we have top line data from our Hope B pivotal study uh, being released later this year, a BLA submission in 2021. And for Huntington's disease, um, the first patient procedures were initiated in June, and we expect to have early safety data uh, later this year. In our SCA3 program, the IND has been, um, uh, IND enabling studies have begun, and we anticipate uh, submitting the IND in 2021. And as, a, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the presentation, we will also be continuing to expand uh, and enhance our manufacturing capability. And that concludes the presentation for today. Thank you for your time and interest. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, again, John Guerin, Chief Business Officer at Unicure. Uh, and I look forward to hearing uh, any questions or thoughts that you may have. Thank you very much.